fuck the Mexican mafia you bitches belong to. Fuck your garden islands, punks. What I say? I bet none of you motherfuckers meet me at meet me at in Dupervilla Projects right now. Ho ass motherfuckers. Yeah, we run this shit. You motherfuckers ain't never ran nothing. I'm at this 1990s Fillmore, homie. My first case. My first case, homie. My first fucking case I pulled up. I fucking hopped out. I ran up to this motherfucking porch and I lit it the fuck up. I got back in the fucking car. This is after they lit me up. Over 77 rounds fired into my fucking car. I beat them back here because I never took my foot off the gas. I didn't give a fuck if I died that day. And I sped the fuck away before they got back. The state of Arizona, I'm classified the first drive-by in history. In spite of the fact that that's not a fucking drive-by. And my homies try to fucking put a hit on me over the pen that others that you guys have going on over there. When you snatched down Paul and them. Remember you snitched on Paul? Oh no, you're talking about me, huh? Oh, that's right, that's, no, no, no. Yeah, we don't know whose life story we're talking about, right, huh? Shit gets so goddamn confusing. For sure. For sugar daddy, yo. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, what's up with this dude, okay? All he can talk about is Duper Villa. That's it. He, he's from a fucking street gang at 15. His claim to fame, he did the drive-by on Michael Carball's house. He was in the LA Times, not because of him, but because of Michael Carball. You shoot up a fucking champion's house, you're gonna be in the news. And he'll sit there, that shit right there becomes his claim to fame. Oh, I was on the LA Times. Bitch, no, you you were on it because of Carbohol, not because of you. In 1999, when Pablo and them were, that, that's another thing. He keeps, oh, uh, he's the one that snitched on Pablo. Talking about me, that I snitched on Pablo. I didn't have nothing on Pablo. I've never been on the streets with Pablo. Me and Pablo didn't do anything together. He, he, he just talks to talk. He doesn't know anything he's talking about. But regardless, so in 1999, he's out for a little bit. Pablo wants to kill him. Crow is saving his life at this time, like he did before. Let me, I'll take you guys all the way back. When, when, when he got busted, Originally, at 15, he told on his homeboy Mariano. Mm -hmm. he, told on, he told on Mariano, and his excuse, if you if you watch his videos, is because well they were gonna find a man, they were gonna catch him anyway because his fingerprints were in the car. So I told him, yeah, my buddy Mariano was in the car with me, but he didn't know I had, I was gonna do that stuff. That's what he tries to say. I have a wheela from his other homeboys saying when they were in Perryville, Mariano pulled out the paperwork and was like, what's up, man? How come they ain't hit bad boy? He fucking, he snitched on me. And the reason they hadn't hit him is because when he got to Cimarron out that way, they were going to hit him. Little, little RJ was trying to get him hit and David Fierro and them. Crow spoke up for him and was like, nah, we're going to let the little homie make it because he was only 15 years old. He didn't, you know, none of that stuff matters. What happened when he was 15, he was a kid, this and that, so we're going to let him make it. That's it. Now, he tries to come out and say that, that all of that stuff about them about to hit him and all that is, is because of politics behind drive-by. We never had that issue in Arizona. You can't have it both ways. He likes to sit there and say, we don't talk about, we ain't with California, we ain't the same thing, we ain't this, but we have the exact same politics on the no drive-by? It's bullshit. No one ever, the, the drive-by shit meant nothing. 
His drama was because he told on Mariano, period. I have papers on all this stuff. I just don't want to sit here and, and go back and forth with this dude because it doesn't matter. It, it, we're not here to do that. We're here to do something, I thought, bigger and better. But he won't stop running his fucking mouth. So then in 99, he gets out. Pablo wants a whack. They take him on a pegada where Greyhound and um, and Chulon kill Watohead. Pablo's driving bad boys in the car too. Bad boy jumped out and put a bullet in the dude too. One bullet shot it into fucking uh, Watohead. Watohead was already dead. The, uh, uh, Chulon had already shot him in the chest with a shotgun. And Greyhound had already unloaded the fucking the, the, the revolver in his head. But he did that, jumped in the car, they all took off. After that, he disappeared. No one heard from him again. That's why Pablo then put a pegada on him because he was afraid that this dude disappeared because he was going to tell. So Pablo's like, we got to get him before he goes and tells uh, the feds about the, the Wato head hit. We need to get him before that. That's why Pablo wanted to get him hit. And now he tries to say that Pablo got an open court and said that they were going to kill him. Come on. What, in what world <laughs> that happened? You're talking about a captain in the Mexican mafia is going to get up and say in, in open court and say, yeah, we're going to kill bad boy. <laughs> what the fuck? Why? Why? What would? What would? Why would he do that? Why would he tell the feds that? What motivation would there be to do that? It's just. It's. It's. It doesn't even make sense. But that's what happened. After that, he disappeared, and nobody heard from him again. Nobody heard from him again. I never met the dude. I had heard that he was, you know, a birdie in the wind. Nobody could find. But that was it. He was gone. And then he went to PC and finished his time and got out. And now he's on YouTube acting a fool. 